Greetings everyone, my name is Greg Gay. Welcome back to Surrendered Image Video and today we're going to talk about part two of three of doing the right thing. I just want to remind you again to think for yourself whatever situation you are in, no matter what religion you are involved in, if you are not free to in an environment where you can ask questions then you need to get out of those questions. It's not about being conformed to the thoughts of some other man. You need to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Is it always right to do the right thing? Yesterday I asked you the question, and I asked you what are the determining factors in your life that will help you decide right from wrong? Everyone claims sola scripture. We touched on that. I want to give you the answer today as to why so many come to so many different conclusions. If there's one mistake we've been making is in all the different contexts that we can look at in Scripture, probably the most important one is the New Covenant, is what covenant we are under, and realizing that our guide is the Holy Spirit, that the Bible is not a book, a primarily an ethical book at all. It always was to point to Jesus and always will be. So when you read God's Word, preachers, teachers, all the individuals out there, you got to look into what covenant is, or you're going to be misrepresenting the heart of God, and we don't want to do that. In Galatians 5, verse 16 to 18, we read that my counsel is this. Live freely, animated, and motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feel the compulsions of selfishness, for there is a root of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds with the free spirit. Just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness, these two ways of life are antithetical, so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way according to how you feel on any given day. Why don't you choose to be led by the spirit and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law-dominating existence? Thank God for the message version. It's great. Spirit of the law versus the letter of the laws is what we're really always talking about. Because have you ever noticed, this is getting to the crux of the matter. Why is the Bible full of key people who seem to be doing the wrong things? Well, what about Rahab in Joshua chapter 2? Why were these guys at her place Anyway, have you ever thought about that and how God ends up using Rahab in that whole situation? The harlot who lived in the wall. Wow, that's an interesting story, especially when you get into Matthew chapter 1 and you see how she's part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. But what about someone who was perfect and who did the wrong things? Well, that's Jesus. He came from the wrong place. He hung out with prostitutes and tax collectors. He wasn't religious like the Pharisees. He was always in trouble with them for doing things wrong, like not keeping the Sabbath right according to how they thought it should be. We see that he talked to somebody like the woman at the well in John chapter 4, broke cultural taboos. Jesus understood the spirit of the law. With the woman at the well, he loved her. He had compassion for her. And of course he's going to talk to her. Well, the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 23, we see that they really did not understand the spirit of the law. As a matter of fact, in John 5 verse 39, Jesus said, You search the scripture because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me. And you are unwilling to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory from men. But I know you, that you do not have the love of God in yourselves. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. You see how they missed it? The religious Pharisees, they were looking into the scripture for all these rules, thinking that they could make an ethics book out of the Bible, and they totally and completely miss the message of the spirit of the law that was pointed to Jesus who was standing right in front of them. The Pharisees thought if they could just do all the right things that they were good to go. And Jesus burst their bubble. And you know what? And you'll see the same thing today. They wanted to kill him for it. If you ever end up in a situation 
where you actually speak to somebody who is extremely legalistic about the situation that they're in, they will want to remove you one way or the other. That hasn't changed. In Romans 2 verse 29, it says, But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that which is of the heart by the Spirit, not by the letter. And his praise is not from men, but from God. It's always about the condition of our hearts, folks. And you know what? Tomorrow we're going to look into more, some more interviews. We're going to get down and have a whole lot of fun. And I'm going to ask you some questions that you might even be surprised about. And doing the right thing, part three of three. See you tomorrow.